Hello and welcome to the Chester County Virtual College Fair. My name is Krista and I'll be your facilitator for this evening. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started with this session. You are muted and your video is off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, if you have any questions, please utilize the Q&A button to type them at any time. I invite you to join the breakout room uh, immediately after this session uh, for 15 minutes to chat with any counselors about any questions you might have as well. And a recording of this session and all sessions will be available uh, at strivescan.com slash Chester County. So first up is Ryder University. Perfect, thanks so much, Krista. And thanks everybody for joining us this evening. I'm just gonna be a moment here to share my screen and then we will get started. Alrighty, so uh, we are Ryder University and my name is Connor Keeley. I am the uh, Pennsylvania representative uh, for Ryder University. Uh, my colleague, Marianne Kohler may have visited your school as well. She does cover Chester and Delaware counties, um, but I'm often at those schools as well. Um, and so we are a smaller school located in um, New Jersey, right there in the center between Philadelphia and New York, also very close to the Jersey Shore as well. Um, but although we are small, to know us is certainly to love us. So we are a campus great and small, about 4,000 undergraduate students, and one in four of those students are first generation. So if you're the first to go to college in your um, family, you're not gonna be alone in that. Many of our students um, come from that background. We do have about seven students on average in our classes. So the class size that you're used to in your high school is probably what you can be used to um, at Ryder as well. And with an 11 to one student to teacher ratio, we really do offer personalized and individualized experience, both within the classroom and outside of the classroom as well. Um, in the top right corner there, you can see an aerial view of our beautiful campus, as well as the lake that's featured right there in the middle of our campus, along with some hammocks and cool places to hang out outside. So we have tons of different majors to um, study at Ryder. You can be a musical theater major, you can be an accounting major, education, business analytics. Which way will you go? We don't know, um, but there's tons of different avenues for you to explore. So 70 different majors um, and programs offered at Ryder University. So here are those 70 plus undergrad majors. And then on the right hand corner or right hand side, you'll see our fifth uh, year graduate programs as well as our pre-professional programs, pre-med, pre-law, pre-dental and pre-allied health advising. Um, so lots of different options there. Please ask some questions in the Q&A if you have any questions about those listed there on the screen right now. So engaged learning is something that sort of sets Ryder apart from other schools. And uh, you need six engaged learning credits in order to graduate. Engaged learning um, is basically learning happening outside of the classroom, learning by doing. So you can see here, you know, in the exercise science lab out there on the Delaware River, um, in a lab, uh, doing an internship, doing community service, tons of different opportunities, but you need six of these credits in order to graduate. So the Cranberry Investment is basically saying that nine out of 10 of our students are successful after graduating, but for whatever reason, if you are not able to find success within six months of graduating, we guarantee that we will give you either career coaching, um, an internship, a paid internship, or nine um, credits, nine free credits of undergraduate coursework, just to beef up your, um, your resume and to make you more competitive when you're looking for jobs. We are Division I school, so again, though we're small, we are mighty, um, and Stella Johnson is a good example of that. Um, our first uh, female uh, women's basketball player to be drafted to the WNBA. So lots of different options for both men's and women's sports, Division I, but we also have some competitive club sports as well. So these are some important dates for our seniors, so November 15th. Crazy to think that that's coming up, but it is. So our early action deadline, it is non-binding, meaning you do not have to um, commit to the university. It's just a way to get a um, decision from us early on. And then any musical theater or acting majors, you do need to um, get your application in by November 15th. And then some other dates that are important there, January 15th, February 1st. And of course, May 1st, an exciting day, May 1st, 2022, making your deposit. So this is sort of uh, gives you a uh, idea of what our students are like academically. 3.4 is our average GPA, 11.20 for SAT, and then uh, 22 for our, S or for our ACT. And that is an average, so we are test optional. And if you, uh, you know, haven't taken your tests or you don't like your test scores, just leave them out and apply as test optional. But if you like them and they are above our average, I definitely recommend you um, submitting them and then they can be considered. 
So some of our scholarships and grants, we have full tuition scholarships, as you'll see there at the top two, and then our merit scholarships, presidential down to rider recognition, and then some special scholarships for um, either legacy, um, women's leadership, the Bonner um, service scholarship, lots of opportunities. But about $19,000 is the average student assistance package. So though Ryder is a private school and tends to be a bit more expensive, we do make it more affordable and more comparable to our um, competitors and even our uh, fellows or our uh, state schools in New Jersey, we can compete with um, due to our generous scholarships and financial aid. So um, if any of this sounds exciting or interesting, I encourage you to come visit us. We have some open houses coming up very soon, some in uh, November and then uh, some in April as well. We also have the opportunity to be a Bronx for a day, come and hang out with us and be a student for a day. And if you visit three times, you can get $1,000 towards your textbook next year. So I talked really fast and I'm never sure if I'm under the six minutes, hopefully I am. But I really, really encourage you guys to ask some questions. If you don't ask them today, here's my info um, if you want to ask me later. But if you have questions today, please use the Q&A chat both for myself and for my colleagues on, uh, on the call from other schools. We'd love to hear your questions. That's what makes our job uh, more interesting. Um, but please come visit Ryder, apply as, as soon as you can. Um, and yeah, good luck with everything. Contact me if you need me, Connor Keeley, Pennsylvania rep for Ryder University. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Centenary University. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrea Castro. I'm actually a transfer enrollment counselor here at Centenary, um, but I did start out working on the freshman side, so I'm more than happy to discuss with you any questions you have about our freshman admissions process tonight. So just some fast facts about Centenary. We were established in 1867 by the United Methodist Church. So while we originally had that affiliation, we currently um, do not have an affiliation. We welcome all backgrounds and religions to um, you know, come be part of our family. We have over 50 academic programs, and this includes majors, minors, concentrations. We are division three, and we have 13 men's and women's sports teams, including basketball, baseball, soccer, softball, and some more we'll go over later, as well as four equestrian teams that are actually nationally recognized and ranked um, as part of our equine studies program, which same is nationally recognized. We are a small school with about 1,100 students for undergraduate enrollment. Um, so our student to faculty ratio is about 17 to one with the largest class size being around 25 students. So you really get that individualized attention here. 98% of our students are employed or in grad school within nine months of graduation. And we have more than enough faculty and staff willing to help your student to be the best that they can be, help them build a resume, apply to internships, or find placements in graduate school after. We are close to New York City, just over an hour, um, and we have a train station about two blocks from campus, so we are very accessible. And 99% of our first year students receive a grant or a scholarship from us. So our application process, we try to keep it as simple as we possibly can. We have both our centenary application on our website as well as Common App. Um, so either one is acceptable and both are free. There's no fee required. All we need from your student is proof of your high school transcript. Um, with proof of graduation, obviously you're most likely going to apply pre-graduation. So we'll just take the most updated version you have and you guys can keep sending us you know, updated transcripts as the term continues. We also encourage your student if they've uh, participated in any dual enrollment programs with your local community college or a four-year school, we are gonna need those transcripts as well to see how those classes will transfer in. Recommended but not required are letters of recommendation and an essay as well as your standardized test scores. Um, again, we don't require them, but we love learning more about our students. So if you think that there's something important you wanna share with us, you're more than welcome to. Once we have all of the documents we need, our turnaround time is generally about 48 hours, and we also have some instant decision opportunities available. So again, we have over 50 uh, majors, minors, and concentrations. So for example, you'll see business administration listed as the major. However, we have concentrations in accounting, marketing, management, sports uh, and entertainment management, social media marketing, um, some of our other big programs include education and our sciences, 
We actually have a lot of new programs this year, including exercise science, health science, writing, public health, and computer science. So this is just a look at our scholarships. There is no uh, additional application for these scholarships. Students are automatically evaluated for them, and you'll see it goes based off of the student's GPA. So whatever cumulative weighted GPA is listed on your transcript, that's the uh, academic scholarship you'll be awarded per year and it's yours for the four years that you are with us. And you'll see there, you can pile on anything that you qualify for in the FAFSA, and you can submit your FAFSA using the FAFSA code listed here. So as I said earlier, we are Division Three school. Most of our teams just made the switch to the Atlantic East Conference with two, I believe, of our teams still competing in CSAC until next season. So again, we have our men's and women's as well as our equine teams. So baseball, basketball, lacrosse, field hockey, um, soccer, volleyball, wrestling. There's plenty of ways to get involved with sports and we also have intramurals and club sports as well. So student life, we like to say, there's nothing to do here. So no Centenary University student ever. We have Spirit Week, our uh, hometown holiday, Midnight Munchies. We have tons of events that student life puts on during the week as well as on the weekends and students love to go out and just get involved. We also have over 50 different clubs and organizations, some of which are listed here. A great thing that I love to highlight about Centenary is that our students are serious about their community service and volunteer opportunities. So for example, we have our midnight run, we have students taking on prevention, we have therapeutic writing, we have campus ministry. All these clubs and organizations love getting involved in the community and trying to help our community in any way that they can. So it's a great enrichment for them and it's also gonna look great for them on their resume. So if anybody has any questions, I talked really fast as well, try to make sure I'm within the time, um, but I'm more than happy, as I said, to speak with any of you. If you have questions to throw in the Q&A, or if you wanna talk with me, schedule a campus visit, my contact information is below and I'll put it in the chat later on tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Hofstra University. All right, thank you. Let me just go ahead and share my screen here. I don't know if I'm having technical difficulties now. Of course, <laughs> when this just worked earlier. Let me see really quick what is going on here. Okay, well, if that doesn't work, I can also talk off the cuff, of course, without a PowerPoint presentation. Um, so welcome everyone. So sorry for the technical difficulties. Don't know what's happening with my PowerPoint. Um, Missy, do you want to try um, jumping on and off back off, jumping off and back on, and we'll just let the next institution present or? Yeah, I can definitely do that if that's okay. Yeah, let's do that. Um, why don't we have St. Elizabeth University um, jump in in the meantime, uh, while Hofstra is able to pull up their presentation. So it, yeah, so I would just recommend jumping off and jump back in. Thank you. Beer. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey. I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay, well, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be joining you. As I mentioned, my name is Kelsey Bull. I'm one of the um, undergraduate admissions counselors at St. Elizabeth University. Today, I'm just gonna go over some of the wonderful aspects of SEU and why it's a great option for you to continue your studies with us. Just some fast facts about our school. We're located in Morristown, New Jersey. We were founded by the Sisters of Charity in 1899. We were actually one of the first um, all women's colleges in New Jersey. In 2016, we did become co-ed. Currently, we are about 60% women and 40% male, and we gained our university status um, July of 2020. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about where we're located. As I mentioned, we're in Morristown, New Jersey, and we're really in the perfect spot. We're in a safe suburban area that's close to um, two major cities, and it really has our advantages for our students. 
Our campus is quiet and small and really lets our students focus on their studies, but having our train station right on campus allows our students to take advantage of internships and other opportunities in New York and Philadelphia, and our students are able to actually have um, their cars on campus, which really gives them an opportunity to find jobs locally and in the city as well. Next, I would just like to talk about how attending a small school can truly benefit you as a student. Having an 11 to one faculty to student ratio really means that your professors are gonna know you on a first name basis. If you need to speak to them about a topic, an assignment, anything like that, you're not gonna be waiting in long lines for office hours. Our faculty genuinely cares about our students and their success and aren't going to let you fall behind. In addition to our amazing uh, faculty, our academic success center provides free tutoring, free writing workshops, and other services to help our students really succeed at their time at SEU. Making your career happen. SEU has a variety of majors and minor, minors in special programs designed to meet various needs. We have over 40 majors and minors from you to choose from in addition to our combined degree programs that allow our students to complete their bachelor's and master's degree in five years. So on this screen, anything that you see bolded and have a little star, those are our programs that you can do the combined degree in. As I mentioned, we're located in Morristown, New Jersey, and we're actually on the same road as two other universities, Fairleigh Dickinson and Drew University. We actually have a walking path onto Fairleigh Dickinson. All three of us are um, pretty small schools, so we actually have the opportunity to do um, cross-registration with them. So our students are able to take classes with them at the SEU price, and we are the cheaper of the three schools. So it really gives our students a great opportunity, especially when they are thinking about doing um, an individualized major. Next, I'm just gonna talk about um, some bridge programs. Um, SEU allows our students to get a head start on their education by offering three unique summer opportunities. All of these programs are typically four and a half weeks long on campus, free room and board, food, material, et cetera. And you can earn up to 10 credits doing these even before you start college, which is a really great opportunity. As we know, high school and college are very different. So this really gives you the opportunity to get acquainted to the school, meet your professors, have friends right off the bat. It's a really awesome opportunity should you be offered a spot. Next, one of my favorite things about SEU is the SEU Promise Program. It was designed to ensure our students are successful upon graduation, especially with COVID. We've seen a lot of students graduating, having a really hard time finding um, jobs, everything like that. So we really wanna make sure our students are prepared for when they graduate. So you're automatically enrolled as a freshman. And if you decide to um, stay in your entire four years, you're gonna have individualized advising, support, workshops, they're gonna help you find internships, like learn how to write a resume and make sure when you graduate, you are prepared to find a job. If for whatever reason you do not find a job or get into a grad school within six months of graduating, SEU will provide you with a six paid month internship to give you even more experience for your resume. Every student that has participated in this program has been able to receive a job or actually start a grad school, but it's really nice to see that our students are still going to be supported even after they graduate. Athletics, SEU is home to 12 NCAA Division III sports. We are a part of the Colonial State Athletic Conference. This ensures that we're matched um, evenly with competitors within a three hour radius. Although we are Division III, our school is extremely competitive in sports. Every sports game that we have, all of the seats are completely full us. Uh, Build, so um, you'll definitely have the support here at our school. Um, at the bottom of our screen, I have our athletic liaison, James Adams contact information. I'll be happy to put that in the chat later just so you can ask any questions if you have any for him. Next, I just wanna talk about life at SEU. We have two residence halls on campus, Founders Hall and O'Connor's Hall. Clubs and organizations, we have 25 um, for our students to choose from with the ability to start your own as well. And of course, a ton of different opportunities for our students to have on campus, whether it be an on-campus job, um, different workshops, whether it be resume or interview um, building, study away program, which is our study abroad. Obviously with COVID, we haven't been focusing too much on that, but hopefully as things are getting better and better, that's something that we'll be able to look into again. And of course, a topic on everybody's mind, making college affordable. Um, SEU helps um, make college affordable. 98% of our students receive some type of form of federal or state institution, and the average package is $33,000.
And applying to SEU is free and easy. All we need is your high school transcript, two letters of recommendation, personal essay, and of course, your SAT optional. So thank you so much. Um, here are just some events that are coming up. Hopefully you can attend. If you would join anything in person or virtual, you get an $1,000 um, tuition grant. So thank you so much for having me. I'm gonna exit out of my screen. Thank you so much. Hofstra University, did you wanna try again? Yeah, let's give it another shot. All right, yep, now it's coming up. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. I've done so many of these. This is the first time it's happened. So <laughs> thanks everyone for your patience. So uh, welcome again. My name is Christine Meyer. I am one of the assistant deans of admission at Hofstra. I primarily work with all of our students from the state of Pennsylvania, as well as Western New York and Northern California. And I'm excited to talk to you all today. So if you're not too familiar with Hofstra, we are located in New York State. More specifically, we are on Long Island. So we are right in the heart of the suburbs of Nassau County. So we are never too far from anything you might need, about 10 to 15 minutes away from the beach, the park, the mall, Target, Stop and Shop, whatever you might need is very close to campus. We are also about 25 miles away from New York City, which is about a 45 minute train ride. So we love to say that we have the best of both worlds here at Hofstra. You get that typical college campus life experience, as you can see in that bottom left hand picture. That's actually one of our quads on campus. So that's pretty much a typical day where our students are out having class outside, having lunch outside. But then of course you can conveniently hop on the train and go into New York City for an internship or go there on the weekend, which is so much fun. So Hofstra is considered a mid-sized school. We're about 6,120 undergraduate students. We also have great small class sizes. So our average class size is 21 with a student to faculty ratio of 13 to one. So this gives you really personal interaction in the classroom. And as far as our campus community, you still have that big college campus feel but you have that smaller community feeling, seeing students that you know every single day, passing them in the halls or outside on campus. And then of course, having a lot of discussion-based learning um, and hands-on learning in your classroom. We have about 165 undergraduate programs. So anything that you could think of, we probably have it at Hofstra. Most of our students do choose to double major or add a minor alongside of their major, which is a really popular option. We do also have students from 48 of the US states and 78 different countries. So students from really all over the world that are all in the same boat as you coming to college for the first time. And as you can see here, all of our program options that you can choose from, I always recommend checking that out on our website. You can see everything in a little bit more detail. We are definitely well known for a lot of programs. Business is a very strong department on our campus as well as our school, uh, school of communications and the science related fields as well. So those internship opportunities, like I mentioned, students can go out into New York City, but you can also stay on Long Island as well. So we work with a lot of really great companies that you can see there. You probably recognize a good amount of them, if not all of them. 71% um, of our students complete at least one, and plenty of our students often have two or three by the time they graduate. So being involved on campus is a really big part of being a Hofstra student. We have over 220 clubs and organizations you can join. Anything you can think of between community service groups, fraternities and sororities, academic organizations, acapella groups, dance groups, you name it. If we don't have it, you can always create it. We do also spend a lot of time giving back to the community. So our students spend about 100,000 hours each year giving back to our local community, running a Relay for Life on campus, St. Baldrick's, also going to food pantries, um, boys and girls clubs, giving back to shelters, running clothing drives on campus, things like that. So there's plenty of opportunity for community service. We are also a division one school for athletics. So we have 21 NCAA division one sports teams, both men and women's really awesome. Right now our women's soccer team is actually 10th in the nation. So we are really excited about that, but it's a big part of our spirit support on campus and going out to support our student athletes. We do guarantee four years of on-campus housing. So you are always guaranteed a room on our campus. We have 35 different residence halls. So there is plenty of space for all of our students. And we do of course have a first year only complex which is very popular for our first year students. So our application deadlines, things to keep in mind, we run the same three deadlines every year. So early action one, two, and then regular decision. Early action one and two, of course, are non-binding. So if you apply and you are accepted, 
you are not committed, you are not locked in, you can absolutely still make your final choice by May 1st, but all students are automatically considered for scholarship when you submit your application. So I always say the sooner the better. We are also a test optional school, so no hesitation there. If you do not want to submit your test scores, you do not have to. But of course, if you are really proud of your scores or if you fall in or above those ranges that you see there for either SAT or ACT, you are more than welcome to submit your scores. If you're unsure, you can always reach out to our office or reach out to me personally, and I'm happy to help guide you. But you will find us on Common App as well as our own personal application. So whichever application you prefer to use is up to you. Some things I recommend doing next, we do of course have a virtual tour. So if you haven't taken a look at our campus yet, I definitely recommend um, for sure taking our virtual tour for a spin. We do have some great visit opportunities as well, both virtually and in person. We are open for in-person tours. So feel free to come anytime during the week or on the weekend for a tour by one of our awesome student tour guides. And we are running a few open houses as well. We actually have one this Sunday and then we'll have one in November. And then of course, when you're ready to apply, you can always go to our website, and follow that to Common App or our application. And of course, all of our social media, check us out on all the things happening at Hofstra. And this is my contact information. I'll also leave it in the chat for you. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Reach out to me at any point. I'm happy to help you in the application and the decision process. But thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Montclair State University. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Um, thank you for being with me. My name is Vanessa Deffers. I'm the lead admissions counselor for Montclair State. I'm gonna share some information about our school. So Montclair State University is located very Northern New Jersey. So we're about 12 miles away from New York City. We are considered the second largest school in New Jersey with 21,000 students on our campus, 17,000 undergraduate and each freshman class will have around 3,100 students. Even though we are the second largest school in New Jersey, we are considered a medium-sized institution nationally. And we do keep class sizes around 25 students. That's a 17 to one student faculty ratio. So you're not gonna have much of those lecture hall experiences, but probably similar to what you have in high school now. For Montclair State University, we do have our students come in with around a 3.3, 3.2 GPA, so it's about a B plus. And for our academic programs, we do offer around 300 academic majors, minors, and concentrations. So Montclair State is a big school, if you're not familiar. We are on a suburban campus, 252 acres overlooking the New York City skyline. What's really fantastic is that we do have 10 different residence halls for students to live in, and almost 5,500 um, 5, students do live in one of our 10 different residence halls. Again, being 12 miles away from New York City, you have best of both worlds. Um, again, we're located in more of a suburban area um, overlooking New York City skyline, but only 30 minutes away, 12 miles away, is New York City. We do offer our own two train stations right on either end of our campus, as well as our bus service and local shuttle services to New York City, as well as the local areas around Montclair and local areas such as Clifton and Little Falls. So Montclair State University is very proud of the diverse campus that we have here. We see international applicants from 40 different countries, every single county in New Jersey, in every single state, United States, except for one this year. <laughs> But for Montclair State University, um, we not only bring in diverse group of students, we also excel in student services. So for example, we are um, considered Hispanic serving institution. We've been listed over 18 years in a row as a top 100 college for Hispanic students. We are also located as one of the best um, for LGBTQ plus constituents. So for these students, we again, um, really excel in our student services, as well as what we offer our students here on our campus. We're also nationally ranked in our College of the Arts programs, teacher education programs in our business schools. And for um, those that are interested in specific programs such as performing arts, again, we are nationally ranked. But for the 300 different academic programs and concentrations, we do have very, very popular majors here and within our business programs, biology, communications, in addition to our teacher education and exercise and computer sciences. Montclair State University is home to also 70 plus different combined degrees. And for combined degrees, we offer two types. We offer where you have your bachelor's and your master's degree. So the same exact program in five years, so you'll save time and money. For example, some of our most popular programs for a combined degree in five years get the same degree would be for accounting, psychology, computer science. So those are our top combined degrees where you would have both your bachelor's and your master's in that program within five years. We also offer over 14 different programs for four plus one MBA options. 
This means that as a current student at Montclair State, typically at the end of your sophomore year, you could also apply for your MBA. So on the right-hand column, I have a list of example programs where you could have your undergraduate degree, such as religion, and then apply for your MBA. So you would end up with your master's in business administration as well. Again, saving you time and money and also making you more competitive in the job fields. However, if you're not sure what you like to do, that's completely fine. One third of our students do come in undeclared or pre-major. For Montclair State University, we have what's called the discovery program. This means that if you're not sure what you'd like to do, but you do have an interest, you could be in one of our discovery tracks here in the middle. We'll align you with this discovery track. You'll have your whole cohort of peers that are also in this track, but it's gonna be able to give you sample courses of what it's gonna be like in those majors. So for example, if you know you're interested in business, but you're not really sure what in business, you could be undecided, but go into the management industry and technology track. You're gonna be able to sample classes that still count for graduation within business. You'll be able to also have an advisor that's gonna give you more information about these majors, what kind of programs from these majors lead to careers and what kind of majors come out of those interests. What's really fantastic again is that it's a very popular program. So these students are gonna have very guided experiences. The goal of the program is to have you confident in what you'd like to declare as a major by the time you're a junior. Montclair State University, again, is a larger campus, um, and we do have huge involvement for those that are either going to be commuting or living on our campus. Over 120 clubs and organizations, 18 Division III sports, as well as 30 intramural and club sports. Um, for intramural and club sports, we're very popular for men's ice hockey, as well as men, uh, men and women's rugby. And for our 220 clubs and organizations, they range from anything from academic clubs and organizations, spiritual clubs and organizations, religious, as well as multicultural and special interests. So some examples on the bottom right here are different ways to get involved at Montclair State University. We're also very big on community service and service organizations. So in addition, we do have different service days that you could be involved in for Montclair State. I did mention we have 10 different residence halls. Freshmen are guaranteed housing by the National College deadline. And out of the 10 residence halls, freshmen have a choice between seven of them. So if you're applying to Montclair State University, very new, we are now on Common App. So you can apply either directly through our website or through the Common App. Um, we do take um, either one. Um, just know that if you are applying Common App, you will get an email from us to convert your password. So just to give you some deadlines that we have here, we do prefer that you have early action, which is non-binding decision. Apply it by December 1st to get your decision by 23rd. Okay. And I think my time is up, so I'm going to leave you with my contact information. Um, if anyone has any additional questions, I'll also put it in the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And now we are moving on to our Q&A portion. So I do ask that all of our institutions tonight, all of our representatives, if you can please turn your cameras back on for the Q&A portion. Um, well, I just ask a couple of questions before I drop the link in the chat for the breakout session that's happening right after this. So um, my first question, and if we can go in presentation order, and I'll put it here um, for you all just as, as a reminder, if we can go in presentation order. The first question I want to ask is, what is one thing you want students to remember about your institution? Sure. So I did say it in the um, in the presentation, but we are small, but we are great. Um, it's really something that I've realized this year and after, you know, the pandemic that there's so many things that we accomplish as a school of 4,000 undergraduate students um, that it's really amazing. We do things that large schools do in terms of Relay for, for Life, Division One schools, or sorry, Division One sports, um, musical theater productions that rival, you know, things on Broadway and off Broadway. Um, so though we are a small school and you probably or maybe never heard of us, um, it's definitely a chance for you to get to know us and get to know the things that make us great. Yeah, so um, we, like I said, are a really small school as well. So again, we have kind of those big university opportunities. But um, one thing I would like all students to remember is the support services that we have available on campus. We have a really um, kind of well supported and, you know, well, you know, lots of people are um, here of our disability services program, you know, our in-class accommodations, resident accommodations, we have tutoring, we have a writing collaboratory to help students with, you know, writing assignments, research papers, things like that. Um, so, you know, if your student might need a little extra help and you're, you know, 
afraid that they might get lost in a, you know, a bigger school, you know, small schools are, are here specifically for those types of students to help you along the way. Um, so just to take advantage of that, you know, regardless of what school you end up at. I would say for us at Hofstra um, to not write off Long Island when you're doing your college search. So when you think of New York State, you might not automatically think Long Island. You might think the city or you might think way upstate New York. Um, so keep in mind with our you know, location of campus, there are so many vital resources that you get um, just from being in our location itself of campus, but then of course being so close to New York City. Um, so you really have so many different opportunities to kind of branch out and network and really make those connections and also just enjoy your whole college experience, so. So at St. Elizabeth University, there is a bit of a trend here. Obviously we are a very small school, but SEU is really here for you as a student, any way that we can support you, whether it be helping you with different internships, um, different workshops on campus, the SEU promise. We really wanna see you succeed and we're going to be here for you the minute you decide to become an Eagle to the minute you graduate and from here on out. We have two admissions counselors who graduated from here. Their professors were the ones that reached out, let them know that a position was open here that they thought they would be great for, and they were their letters of recommendation. So our professors really, really care about the students, and um, it's a really great opportunity. So thank you. For Montclair State University, I would definitely say um, the strength in our diversity. Um, we really embrace diversity and really believe it does foster success here um, within our students. Um, not because again, just how diverse the campus is, but we really feel that um, when you're here, you feel like home. And we do everything from events to really foster that growth. And of course, with our location proximity, we attract diversity, but also celebrate it with those internship and opportunities. Thank you all for sharing. Um, my next question is a fun one. What is your favorite on-campus tradition? So for this particular season, and I'm never like a Halloween person, but this, this year I'm into it for whatever reason. I made pumpkin cupcakes last night. I'm, I'm all about it. So for this particular season, Scream Fest would be uh, our probably our best um, on-campus tradition. Uh, the admissions office is going to try to take a break this Friday and go to that. So it's a drive-in movie theater um, that happens in our um, student parking lot. And then also 10 different food trucks, which are free, which who doesn't love that? Um, the radio station is running that. Um, there's also uh, make your own pumpkin or jack-o'-lantern, um, tons of different like Halloween activities. Um, so that's just one of our um, events. We have one of those at least each season. Um, so that would have to be it. And then in the springtime, um, we have something very similar to that. So anything that's on campus and anything that's run by our, um, our award-winning student radio station, I would say is, is a good event to be at on campus. So my favorite centenary tradition is also holiday related, but it's when it's a lot colder outside. Um, so my favorite centenary tradition is ac actually a town-wide tradition in the town we're in. We are very connected to our community and our favorite event is hometown holiday. So, you know, everybody on campus as well as people from the surrounding town, um, you know, come to campus to see our huge tree lighting and we light up our big building that's been around since 1900. Um, and it's, you know, so deep rooted. We have sometimes horse and carriage rides around campus. Um, and, you know, everyone just gets involved. We were able to do it virtually um, during COVID. So it's something that really means a lot to not only us as a campus, but to our community as well. So my favorite tradition at Hofstra um, is definitely our fall festival. So it is usually the first big event that we have after students have moved onto campus. So it's also our parent and family weekend. Um, and it's similar to what you would think of with homecoming in high school. So what we actually do is we have a performer come to campus, which is always exciting. So this year we had T-Pain. Um, in the past, they've had Kesha, TLC, all different people come to campus. Um, our student organizations have different activities 
throughout the day that all raise money for their philanthropies. And we do have a carnival as well on campus. And then we always have our students going to the men and women's soccer games. So it's just a really big, exciting weekend for all of our students and their families. So my favorite event on campus is actually our Fall Fest as well. Um, after our first open house of the year, um, all of our students are really looking forward to it. They all get tables for all of their clubs. So after new students have arrived, they, they're able to um, show them everything that they've been working on so far. Families get to come. It's nice, Every all the faculty brings their family as well. We have zip lines, food trucks. It's a really great day just to see um, all of the students in their element walking around campus. It's a really great day. I would say um, for us, definitely World's Fair Day. So World's Fair Day takes place in the spring right after you come back from break. And it is gonna be a big day where all the different clubs and organizations um, represent their culture. There's music, there's food all throughout campus. And you can learn how to dance at different, different cultures. And it's really fun. And you get to know who pretty much everyone is on campus. Um, so that's something that a lot of our student body like really looks forward to right after break. Wonderful, thank you all so much. And uh, we do have a couple of minutes left, so I do invite um, our attendees to ask any questions in the Q&A, using the Q&A, but I'm also going to put in the chat, um, you're invited to join a meeting with all the colleges presenting this hour. You can chat in the breakout room until 8 p.m. And I'm going to actually share my final wrap-up screen so you all can go and jump in there after this and ask any um, prompting questions. One second. Okay, so again, thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you to our panelists and thank you to our attendees. Uh, a quick survey will appear uh, when you close this window. It's very brief, if you can please fill that out. Uh, I invite you again to join that breakout room to talk with the representatives uh, from now until the top of the hour. And a recording of the session and all sessions will be available at strivescan.com slash Chester County. So again, I'm going to drop in the chat the breakout room so you all can go and click on that. Thank you all for joining. So we just joined that link that you did for the breakout room? Yeah. Okay, perfect, thank you. No problem.